Welcome to the Motor Mouth YouTube channel. I'm Zach. I'm Andrea. And we do full-length car reviews each and every week. Halfway through, we stop for a segment called Questions, Coffee, and Cars, and we've spun it off to its own thing. Yeah. We're at number 61. How do you get a question in? Follow along on Instagram at motormouth underscore Andrea. Every Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time, I put a post out with Zach and I holding coffees. Once we gather our questions, the post is deleted, and we start the show. Time now for Questions, Coffee, and Cars. I've already spilled. Yeah. Your questions from Instagram. I've shortlisted two EVs, Genesis GV70 Electrified and the BMW i4 M50. I know both are not the same, but the price point is similar, and both give me what I'm looking for for power, luxury, and comfort. Which one would you two choose? Well, the funny thing is we have gone on record as saying our two favorite electric vehicles in the premium space yeah. is the GV70 Electrified and the BMW i4. I, I, okay, let's count them down. Three, two, one. Mm -hmm. You say what you want, I'm going to say what I want. Ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. I BMW. Four. There you go. BMW i4. The only thing I have an only in there is because of space. The back seat in the BMW is tiny. So if you're always going to take people in the back, some passengers, they may not find the i4 very comfortable. GV70 doesn't have the largest back nope. seat either, but better than the i4. Isn't it interesting that our favorite electric vehicles are based on the conventional cars? Mm -hmm. And that i4 is just a magical car, man. Yeah. They, the thing about BMW, they they dialed in all the BMW stuff you expect, mm -hmm. the handling and the performance, so it's all that. And then Genesis does luxury very well, yeah. and I think that's excellent. And they that. did a good job with the GV70 electric. If you watch our review on it, we'll leave the card up for the i4. And we can't do both, right? Well, I can put them in the description. We okay, great. So we'll put them in the description for both. But we were impressed with either of them. So you have great choices, but I think there will be different needs and wants depending on whether you have a family or not. Andrea, remind me to put it in the description or I'll forget. I will, I will well, trust me, If I put it out and it's not there, people will go, you forgot the you description. Forgot it. Right, yeah. go. That's okay, just we'll the way make go. sure we do it, okay? What do you think about the reliability of Honda's hybrid? system. I'm looking forward to the new Civic Hybrid. So am I. First off, I already like the Civic. I'm yeah, a we, big fan. Yeah, we were just in Ontario with Honda driving the electric Prologue. Yeah. And our first walk around video is out. It's out. It just dropped a couple of days ago. Yeah. So make sure you watch that. And put that in the description below too. <laughs> um, and we asked them about the Civic and they say um, production of the hybrid Civic is starting at the Canadian facility. It's where it's going to be made in yeah. May. So we're hoping to be back there driving it in May. And um, I it's think a good hybrid their system. hybrid system is excellent. Mm -hmm. It is very polished. It doesn't get the same fuel economy no. as the Toyota system, but it's very good. And Honda has been doing hybrids for a very long time. One of the first on nope, the market. No, the first is the, yes, Hon yes. the Honda Insight. Yes, yes, the first. And you know why? I had to double check that because I was like the Prius. When did the Prius come out? Mm. So Honda is credited with making the first hybrid back in 1999 with the Insight. Yeah, the Insight. The did Prius, I say Insight? Yeah. I don't know if he's did or I think not. I, said, I think I said Insight. Maybe you did. The Prius was released in Japan in 97, but didn't come to the North American market until 2000. Yeah, they were first. Mm -hmm. But who won the race? Toyota won the race because they just kept at it. Oh, interestingly. Oh, do we have mm -hmm. a question about um, hybrids? Because I did get a quote from... From the wall street you Journal. can see it i don't know if it's in the next questions coffee and cars or oh, not but basically it, it, it was uh, i'll summarize it yeah um this is in the wall street journal saying that toyota is going to report their uh, fiscal year end at the end of march mm -hmm. They have had a massive jump in hybrid sales mm -hmm. in the United States and around the world, um, outstripping EV sales. So the EV market's going up, but the hybrid market has just shot up. In the Canadian market, for example, it's almost 50% of all of their vehicles are now hybrids. Mm -hmm. So that, um, who was right? Well, I think the market is showing us that Toyota was right. He's got uh, the last laugh. Yeah, the last laugh. And mm -hmm. it's like back to the previous question about the Civic. It's, it's like, yeah. Um, that's what people right now want. Well, I just think that they're easy. You get great fuel economy. You can drive them just like a gas model. When you need gas, you put the gas in. Uh, the plug big one in is, hybrids. The are, big one is is price. Price is a big so one. So the biggest hurdle for yeah. EVs is they're not inexpensive. Although I wouldn't say Honda hybrids are yeah, but, inexpensive but, in Canada. But there are Toyota hybrids available. You can get a Corolla hybrid. Mm -hmm. It's not going to kill you. And that thing will run 
forever. And what was the number that we got from Honda about the CRV? If I'm not mistaken, they sold last year for 2023 over 57,000 CRVs in Canada. And, in Canada and over 20,000 of them were the hybrid. Yeah. So Something it's not, like that, it's right? It's not the, the same percentage real- as Toyota. Pro- Toyota's with yeah. the RAV4, I think, is way over 50%. And the and the prediction is when the RAV4 is redone for 2025, it'll only be hybrid like they did with Camry. Yeah. Nitro fill tires, pros <laughs> and cons. I'm curious to hear what you're going to say about it. We have never put nitrogen in our tires. Have you ever done that? Okay. The, 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 the chemistry here is that nitrogen is a stable gas mm-hmm. and it doesn't expand and contract um, with heat, right? So if you've ever been on the racetrack, the number one thing they're always checking on race cars is the tire pressure. Yeah. And they put nitrogen in the tires mm-hmm. because it doesn't expand like regular air that you put in a car. Okay, so this is one of the greatest scams ever. Car dealers, being car dealers, will charge people to put nitrogen in their tires. I know. Here's the news flash. The the air you put in your tire is free. (laughs) You don't need to pay for it. And unless you're going to the track and you're hammering around the corners, you do not need to get nitrogen in your car. Interestingly, though, from what I understand, this is what I've heard before, Costco... When you put in tires installed at Costco, put the nitrogen in, it's included. It's included. However, there is a myth that nitrogen-filled tires get better fuel economy and that the tire lasts longer. The National Highway Traffic and Safety Administration did a whole study on this. And they say, no, you don't get better fuel economy. The tires don't last longer. The only reason why you would put nitrogen in a tire is if you have a special vehicle that you're taking to the track often. Did that I? Wait, is where, wait, is yeah, there an echo in here? That is where you will get better performance, possibly. It's not the performance. Why it's, would anybody do that though? No, they did say, no, they said you'll no, get better yes, performance. Better performance because the tire isn't expanding and contracting That's right. That's right. the same way you would with an air filled tire. It's it's a stable gas. So it, it stays, if you t- put it to 40 pounds of pressure, it'll stay at 40 pounds I have of pressure. To interrupt. Look at that. So we're, we're beside a park. We're doing this questions, <laughs> coffee, and cars. And there's this German shepherd that's running around the park with this long stick, almost touching the ground. He's just the cutest. I'm sorry. I lost my train of thought when I saw him. But we, we just lost our dog about six weeks ago. So yeah. whenever Andrew and I go for a walk, we're like, with dogs. we're like this. Oh, my God, it's a puppy. <laughs> By the <laughs> way, we're not getting another dog. But every no. we saw a dashing yesterday <laughs> with long hair. So, so cute. cute. <laughs> this one's cute. You know the thing about German shepherds? They shed. Oh, oh like crazy. Shed. Same with golden retrievers. Anyway, we're, we're admiring all dogs from afar right now. We are not getting one. We travel way too much. Our kids always said to us, oh, when Guinness passes, you're going to get another dog for sure. But because we travel so much, they had to look after Guinness. And now they say, we don't want a dog. Why we would you call dog. your dog Guinness, Andrea? Because he's Irish. He's an Irish terrier. Solid Irish name, and that's right? A, that's this is our beautiful boy here on the screen. So mm-hmm. there you go. Anyway, reflecting on the GX you just tested, do you think it's worth the money? Would you opt for the premium or premium plus? So this is a U.S. viewer. Okay, so we don't get we have signature and premium in Canada. Premium and premium plus are the two base models. So the Canadian base model is the U.S. base model plus a package. So the Canadian base trim is a higher spec than the United Mm -hmm. States. Okay, so um, I I got an interesting one for you. The Overtrail, the off-roady one with the 18-inch wheels. Yeah. Would you get that one or would you get the Boulevard Cruiser with the 22-inch wheels? No, I I think I'd get the other one. I, the overtrail? I, no, I don't think I'd get the overtrail. I like the look of the overtrail, but I think it really gets up there in price. I think specifically between these two trims, there's a $5,000 difference between the two. But you do get more with the Premium Plus. Things like the option of captain's chairs if you want them. Power folding third row. I mean, that's just so convenient to have, right? If you've got... I don't know. I, thought, know. I, I Andrea, like that. Andrea, power folding third row, you use very infrequently. I if want it, was, it if I'm if using we were, it. If we, were, if we had that GX 
and we talked about it. Um, <laughs> uh, those seats would be down 99.9% of the time. I'm just saying. If you're using or- them all the time, then yeah, maybe you want to go for that. I, I, I just want to say one thing. I came to realize at the end of this, I said to Andrea, I want the top banana with the 22 inch wheels, the right. white, the white one. And we drove. Yeah. And then I realized I don't want that. You can get the exact same look with the 22 inch wheels on the one you're talking about, mm-hmm. the, the premium plus cracker one. Mm-hmm. So, um, <laughs> the great thing about GX on the outside, you cannot tell. Can't tell. And that one, the one that Zach's talking about is almost $110,000 Canadian. No, thank you. Plus, plus, so plus, just the, uh, add, the lu- plus the luxury tax. Yes. Plus, I just want to add some other standard features on that premium. Plus include the heated steering wheel, wireless charger, driver seat memory. I think for $5,000 extra, some of those features I would definitely want. Did nobody in the marketing department say there's a cracker called premium plus? Did they not do the math on that? I don't know. I would say that when you look at it on the screen and it says premium plus, I didn't catch on to that either. But you, you're right. Premium plus. But it's plus, not plus. <laughs> All right. Let's move on. I think we're both in agreement. Wouldn't go for the overtrail. Would go for the one that looks like the top one, but isn't. Premium plus. What do you think of the 24 Hyundai Santa Fe redesign? Really considering a base hybrid once they release it in the U.S. in the spring. Yeah. I like the look. Well, I'm, I'm interested to drive the 2.5 turbo, which is mm. the base engine, because mm-hmm. uh, that's a great engine. We drove it in the Santa Fe before, mm-hmm. but it was thirsty as hell. Yeah, They love the gasoline. So great engine, thirsty. I think most people will go for the hybrid. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's going to absolutely crush in the industry. It's the same thing with that GX. Anything that's a box on wheels now, yeah. people Everybody love it. Everybody want it. They're lined up for it. That's where Ford with the Ford Flax. Was a little they, early. Yeah, they needed to just bring it out a little bit later. I think that Hyundai, as well as Kia, the hybrid system is very good. The cabin is just so quiet. Like when you drive the Tucson hybrid, Wow, that thing, sometimes I feel like the quietness is almost driving a pure EV. It's just so smooth. I actually like the hybrid better than the plug-in hybrid Tucson myself. Um, Don't so tell I your can, mom that. No, I Because your mom's not. got one. Yeah, I would never tell her. But the she specifically wanted a plug-in hybrid, so it works for her. But oh, I would say that the second. Santa Fe yeah. hybrid is, I, I'm going out on a limb saying, I bet you that hybrid's going to be great. If so Monica's quiet. watching, oh, look, a dog. <laughs> <laughs> just, Poor Monica. Just yeah, you look, at, just she loves her too, some plug-in hybrid, so it doesn't matter what I say. She thinks it's the best. Honda CRV versus RAV4, which is your pick. Mm. Okay, so... I'm just going to... Can I just start? Oh, gosh. Okay, Zach. What is the best car on the road, period? It is the Toyota RAV4 hybrid. Mm-hmm. You cannot touch that vehicle. It's can spelled. I go... Th- Oh, geez, so that, yes, you're, I'm I'm all over my top. jeans. Let's go through all the reasons again. Compact SUV, number mm-hmm. one best-selling category. Mm-hmm. It's a Toyota. Eh, great resale value. Known reliability. And the price to buy one is crazy inexpensive in comparison, especially to the CRV. I think it's like $12,000 more or something like that. Well, prices have all gone up. Toyota has raised their prices yes, as they well. Have, but, but if it's... you look at the CRV base model in Canada, it is more than the RAV4 XLE model. In the US, the CRV is more expensive base model to base model, but not that much. Mm-hmm. It's in Canada that you see more extremes. Better fuel economy in the mm-hmm. RAV4 compared to the CRV. So the RAV4 is at the end of its life cycle. We suspect it's going to be replaced for 2025. Mm-hmm. But you name me a vehicle on the road that's going to do all of those family duties mm-hmm. for the price they're charging, incredible fuel economy, and only a slight price premium to get into it over the gas model. There is no car on the road that can touch it. No. It's, the, it's the best family car you can buy for the money period so a viewer uh sent me a dm on instagram and said we just got a hold of a rav4 prime brand new that's the, that's the that's the plug-in he says to me what do you think now my wife is thinking she wants something a little bit more upscale should we go for the dodge dodge plug-in what? hybrid oh Oh, the uh, Hornet? Hornet. No. Or <laughs> should we go for the XC40 recharge? And I'm like, you have got your hands on a Prime? If you've got your hands on a Prime, 
Take the bribe. Anyway, they did buy it, and they're really happy and which with one's it. And they got it in red. And which it one's going to be worth the most money in said, five years? Resale value. It's dollars in, dollars out. Bank of Toyota always delivers. I would not go for the Dodge, but I, I do like the XC40 Recharge, but that's a pure EV, not a plug-in hybrid. You got to get the XC60 to get the plug-in hybrid. Hello from Ontario. We were just in Ontario. We it were. was very Vancouver-like weather. Very. Mm -hmm. Although it was warmer here than oh. there, but it was still good. Thank goodness, because we had to do a walk around. Of I the just want to. I just want to tell all the people in eastern Canada. Mm -hmm. I feel bad for the people in the in the Maritimes. They got walloped with snow, Terrible. but the flowers are up in the front yard. Just yeah, saying. They and are. the dogs are running around with sticks. With sticks, and they're happy. It's like a sunny, warm day today. Ten degrees Celsius. Girlfriend is looking to trade in her 19 Chevy Trax for a sedan hybrid. What well, so that's a 2019, would, I'm guessing. Yeah. yeah, 2019. What would be your choices to consider? What would you pick for a sedan hybrid? What's your favorite? Sedan hybrid mm -hmm. to replace a Trax? I don't mm -hmm. know. You could just go Corolla hybrid and you're going to get the all-wheel drive system. So if you had a Trax before, it was available with all-wheel drive. Mm -hmm. uh, the new Trax is only front-wheel drive. Um, yeah, that's probably the one I would go for. I mean, you didn't say anything about budget. So oh, well, the, the Elantra we like a lot. I was just going to say, the Elantra hybrid is really a good deal. Um, if you have more to spend, I think the Prius is terrific. Gosh, it looks so good, but it's getting up there in price. One of my favorites. I go back to it. I know what you're going to say, Andrea. The Accord is kind of boring looking, but I like that model. It handles really well. The cabin remains quiet and it's comfortable. So I so really like the Accord hybrid I'm a only lot. guessing that it's more budget friendly because uh, Chevy Trax was not a premium or a more upscale car. So it's probably budget to budget. I think you're still going to be best with the Toyota or the Hyundai. Hmm. That's just my thought. Okay. Long time viewer. Thank you for the amazing content. Thank you. Currently driving a 2013 Lexus ES350, which my wife and I have absolutely loved. With the recent addition of a baby to the family, congratulations. We're thinking of upgrading to a gently used SUV, three to four years old, either two or three row. Love the roomy and comfortable Lexus RX350, but I wanted to ask if you would recommend any non-Lexus SUVs. Most important to us are reliability and space but looking for something that's more fun to drive well, that was a long Wowzers. okay i just want to say something mm -hmm. i'm going to go back in time to when our boys were born and i wouldn't get rid of that lexus es that quickly that is a big car that has got a huge back seat that is the same platform as the toyota avalon a large sedan with a big trunk yeah and we had what did we have we had a seven series long wheelbase Andrea rocked a seven series long wheelbase. I did. Man, I when, can parallel park that sucker like no one's business. And I got to tell you, of all of the vehicles we've had, yeah. that was the best for putting car seats in the back. The kids didn't kick the seat in front. No. You know, you've, if you've had kids, you know they're like, and the mass on the back of the seat, they couldn't even reach it because. So don't give up on the Lexus ES that quickly because. A lot of people fall into this trap of, well, it's got to be bigger because it's an SUV. Mm -hmm. mm, not necessarily. Now, if you want one that's kind of fun to drive, you're looking at two or three years old. So I would say the Acura RDX. Uh, 2021 model and above is very reliable. That will give you that sporty drive. You've got the reliability now because it's been around for a while. And a big this, back seat. Yeah. yeah, big back seat. That second row has a flat floor. It is terrific for space. So that would be one that I would recommend as a non-Lexus SUV, wouldn't you say? Yeah. I think that's a good one. Uh, well, the thing is, the the ES they have is a 2013, so that's a that's that's a 10 year old car. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know. The only thing with the RDX that you've got to get used to is the good old trackpad. The trackpad and so the push button shifter. You can do that. that I think Lex the RDX would be a good one for you. Or, you know what? Sometimes you want something new, right? I know mm -hmm. you're saying stick around with the ES, but sometimes we just want. I got something a better idea. New. Get a nice, gently used. Lexus LS, yeah. the big dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That you know is what? I gotta tell you, I, I, I whir around on Auto Trader all the mm. time. Why does at that car not surprise me? Uh, um, Why? On cars and, and, that and I have. And around on watches too. Oh yeah. Oh man, I got my new watch mm -hmm. on today. Um, 
and I was uh, looking at Lexus LSs, and I'm thinking to myself, I need a oh Lexus LS God. like a hole in the head. No. But if you bought one and you looked after it, that thing will run indefinitely. That's got a yeah. big back seat. Yeah. You can even but get the... Maybe they want to move to an SUV now. Like well, maybe his wife wants to sit I'm up a bit you, Andrea, higher. That, that happened in our house. We had two seven series and we had a five series wagon which was pretty damn cool andrea had a lot of street kid cred driving the five series wagon i gotta tell you but no 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 andrea said i have to have an x5 suv tiny back seat small cargo space not better well for those who have heard this story before the 740 i wouldn't start it had electric minor issues, issues. Zach always says minor issues. And then also when I called them, they said, I said, it's not starting. Have you and got it in have park? Have you got it in park? Like I, I lost my mind. I lost my mind. You know mind what you should have said? People. Do you know you're speaking to the future motor mouth underscore Andrea? If they only knew. If they only what you, knew. What you turned into. I wonder into. if the guy, I mean, he's probably gone, but that's what he said to me in the service department. I was so furious. I can't tell you. Today I'm still mad about it. Andrea, have anyway, we? Anyway, I said to mm -hmm. Zach, I need a vehicle that starts. Please, could we just get the one that I want? No, and what, it wasn't. It wasn't quite like that, Andrea. It was like I never want to drive this car again. Oh, I hated it. Get rid of it. So the X5 showed up the next day, and we've never owned a BMW since. <laughs> we really have it. No. And the guy who bought our 7 Series, we were totally up front with him. What a wonderful man. We told him about all of the problems. And um, anyway, he, bought it get, anyway. he bought it anyway. And the problems continued with him because he called us and he goes, God, this car. And we're like, we told you. Anyway, we're way we long on time more? here. Just one well, quick Is it one? a quick one? They're always, this is Andrea. <laughs> oh, it's quick. Okay, let's see how quick it is. Okay, best reviewers, your videos are fantastic. Oh, I like this one already. <laughs> I'm glad we did this one. <laughs> what are your opinions on the whole concept of warming up your vehicle before you drive it? <laughs> in the winter, I always use a remote start in my car so it's warm when I get in. But does it really matter if you just get in and start it and drive away? Yes, you can get in and you can drive it away. Guess what? Consumers, consumers... Consumer Reports, their chief engineer said that the technology in these vehicles are so good now that you start up that vehicle, within 30 seconds the engine is lubricated, you can just get in and go. The fastest way to warm up your car is to drive it, okay? So start the car, I know it's cold, and that's why you have bum warmers and heated steering wheel now in cold climates. And by the time you've got your seat belt on and you've checked your mirrors or whatever, mm -hmm. you put it in drive and you drive away slowly. You don't want to stress the engine. You don't want to go full throttle, hard acceleration. No. That's just not smart. And you want to drive smoothly and the car will warm up faster. And the reason why this is true is, um, a car has to, this is now a long, a long answer. Make it snappy. <laughs> the, there is something called a shed test. Mm -hmm. And what they do is they put a car in a shed. Great name for it. Yeah. And then they start the car when it's cold. And then they measure the emissions after a certain number of minutes. I'm not sure how many minutes it is. And there has to be um, a certain level of pollution in the shed for it to pass. Mm -hmm. And the way they get that number down because the car pollutes the most when it's sitting in your driveway warming up is they move the catalytic converter as close to the engine as possible and the heat from the engine warms up the catalytic converter and that scrubs out all the nasty stuff mm. so you starting your car and letting it sit in the driveway sure you're you're nice and warm when you get in it it's the worst for the engine and it's the worst for the environment get in suffer through, put the bum warmers on, and drive smoothly. And we're all worried about the cost of gas. You're using fuel the when it gas. sits there. Mm -hmm. And also, as Zach said, you're giving off emissions. So no, 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 just get in your vehicle, just go. You're warming it up anyway. I get that you want to precondition it. I think with electric vehicles that works, especially if it's in a garage and it's char it's Well, plugged that's in. one of the advantages I mean, of an EV. That's different, yeah. that's different. But if you want to start, I remember when we were, oh, this is getting way too long, but remember when we lived in the apartment and the woman uh, behind us, Ellen, mm -hmm. she always warmed up her Lexus. Yeah, I but she was, from, Lexus. she was from Alberta. I know. So and, she was used I to would, it. We, were, we all got up at around the same time, and I would look out the window, and there she was, you know, from her window, starting yeah, it she, up. And this was new technology at the time. So I work with Ellen. Ellen lived, ironically, in the apartment right opposite us. And yeah. I could, she would get on her balcony and start the car. And Ellen spoke in the third person. <laughs> so Ellen, she would Ellen. say, Ellen doesn't drive a, a cold car. No. Ellen only drives 
drives a warm car. Mm -hmm. Ellen doesn't like this. No. Nope. So she spoke in the third person. Anyway. Ellen loves her car and Ellen loved to go out on the balcony and start and it. She in liked to have condition. a cocktail or five. Did she? Yeah. All right. Uh, that's it. We're all out of time. How do you get a question in again? Follow along on Instagram at motormouth underscore Andrea every Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time. Put a post out. It's only up for a short time. My goodness, the questions come in fast and furiously. It's deleted and we start the show. And the dogs have left the park. Yeah, we were here too long. Thanks for watching.